you can, folk! This is the American Variety Network on Block Talk Radio Alex with Cardinal. Alex, Cardinal. Alex Cardinal. Live from Springfield, Massachusetts. Happy Thanksgiving 2015 to our listeners of the American Variety Network. Enjoy your turkey and get ready for some Christmas shopping right after your meal. Hello, saltwater fish lovers. Welcome to my very first saltwater species profile show here live on Aquarium Talks, the podcast. I'm your host. Fish Keeper, Aqua Alex Cardinelli. Now on this series, I will be discussing different fish species and providing on-air care sheets for them and educating you about these different saltwater fish. Now, as somebody who just recently entered into the saltwater aquarium world, There's not that many saltwater podcasts out there, so I hope with this saltwater fish species profile show that I will be one of the only saltwater shows that provides a lot of information out there. So I can't wait to educate you all about the different species of saltwater fish. This will be a learning experience for both the host and you, the listeners, I think this will be great. Now, this will be a series that has a huge role in 2016 for American Variety Network because I plan to do a lot of saltwater fish species profile episodes on the American Variety Network in 2016. So, if you love saltwater fish, and want to learn about them, then join me by tuning into each of these awesome saltwater fish shows. Now, tonight I was going to start by talking about Nemo, the clownfish, but I found a fish that I really like. It has a great personality, and it's one of the most common saltwater fish, and a lot of people love them. So, the first saltwater fish I'm going to discuss tonight is one of my personal favorites. I am lucky to have one, and he is my favorite fish. He is actually one of my very first saltwater fish, besides the black and white Darwin clownfish. Tonight's saltwater fish that we're going to discuss is the Diamond Goby. One of the most popular gobies in the saltwater world. The diamond goby is known to be an excellent sand sifter and it eats the fauna living in the sand. Now, the diamond goby hails from the Pacific Ocean. The diamond goby is one of my first saltwater fish and it has quickly become a favorite saltwater fish of mine. So, Topics for the show will be why I chose a diamond goby over the other species of saltwater gobies. I'm going to have a complete care sheet for diamond gobies. I'll tell you what they eat. I'll tell you how big they get. Tank size for diamond goby. Why I recommend you keep them and much more. You're going to learn a whole lot about diamond gobies on tonight's show. Now, if you have any questions on Diamond Gobies, or if you'd like to share your very own experiences on Diamond Gobies, please feel free to call in at 1-347-989-8142. Again, if you have any questions on Diamond Gobies, or you want to share your own experiences on keeping Diamond Gobies, the call in number is one 347 989-8142. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start our very first saltwater fish profile episode right after the American Variety Network makes its introduction felt.
You are tuned in live to the American Variety Network here live on Blog Talk Radio. With a name like American Variety, you can expect a wide variety of topics. Now, let's get live here on the AV Network. Hi, Jeremy Stillhorn. I'm tuned into the American Variety Network where I find the show is very educational and entertaining. Are you bold enough to call in and interact with tonight's topic? Well, prove it by calling in live at one 347 to ask questions about tonight's topic or share your thoughts on tonight's topic. Just pick up your phone and dial one 347 and go into a quiet location. Again, that's one 347 Now let's get on with the show. Anything and everything Aquarium Fish. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Aquarium Talk the Podcast, which is our tropical fish keeping podcast where we will discuss anything from freshwater catfish to freshwater oddballs to the awesome saltwater clownfish, tans, and even corals and live rock. So, fish keepers, sit back, relax, and unwind. Aquarium Talk the Podcast is now on the air. Aquarium Talk, the podcast. Aqua Alex will talk about some of his most favorite saltwater species and educate you on these fantastic saltwater species. So, saltwater species profile is now live on Aquarium Talk, the podcast on American Variety Network. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the diamond goby. Such a beautiful fish. Now, I'm going to start tonight's show by talking about why I got a diamond goby. Now, originally, I was interested in a pink-spotted watchman goby, and I actually called my local fish store and said, hey, Order me a pink spotted Watchman Goby, and I will come and get it when I get paid on the first. And the original Goby that I was supposed to get was the pink spotted Watchman Goby, but for whatever reason, the local fish store did not get them in. And I was really bound and determined to get a Goby as one of my first saltwater fish, along with my black and white clownfish. So, I decided to grab a Diamond Goby. Now, my first one I bought was about four to five inches, and he was very nice. He was a show stealer. He was very beautiful. He was a show fish. But, unfortunately, he jumped out when I was at a Halloween party the same day I bought him, and I lost him. I was really devastated, and uh, I know that diamond gobies now are jumpers, and uh, it's really a shame, really sad. So, I was deciding what other fish to get to replace that diamond goby that jumped, but then I saw this little two to three inch diamond goby, and I instantly 
fell in love with him. I named him Sandy because he loves to hide in my sand. So after taping the corners and adding glass panels, my tank is now jump free, meaning no fish should be able to jump. Now, I hit the lottery the day I got my second Diamond Goldie, the 2-3 to three inch one, because this guy is so full of personality. Plus, he eats. Yes, that's right. My Diamond Goldie eats bloodworms, brine shrimp, market shrimp, and new era flakes and pellets. I think I am either a great fish keeper or I lucked out. Or, my local fish store is simply awesome. No, many of the saltwater fish keepers were very harshly criticizing me about the Diamond Gobi, saying it would not eat well or do well in my 29-gallon aquarium. But, just like Alice Cardinelli always does, I proved you all wrong once again. I've been proving people wrong since the beginning of time. <laughs> I'm just kidding anyway. But really, if you would like to see my Diamond Gobi actually eat, please go to my YouTube channel, Alex's Adventures, and you will see for yourself. The title of the video is One Week Update and Feeding. And you can see my Diamond Gobi and my black and white clownfish eat marine flakes. So, I've been lucky enough to have such a great diamond goby, and I cannot wait to add him into my 120-gallon saltwater aquarium. No problems with this awesome diamond goby so far. Knock on wood. Okay. So I just thought I'd share that interesting story with you of how and why I got a Diamond Goby. Now, I want to talk to you about why I like and love Diamond Gobies. First and foremost, I love their personality. I mean, Diamond Gobies have such outstanding personalities. One minute they are cleaning your sand and redecorating your tank with sand. And the next minute he's eating food that I put in the aquarium. My Diamond Goby has the great personality that I'm looking for in a saltwater fish. Plus, I think they are very cute and nice looking. I love the orange coloration on Diamond Gobies. He's got some heavily orange spots. And Diamond Gobies are a very beautiful fish. Now, those of you who are actually listening to this show, you are actually looking at a Diamond Goby slideshow right here on Blog Talk Radio. All those fish pictures you're seeing are actually Diamond Gobies. See how beautiful the Diamond Gobies are? A very stunning fish. I love the orange coloration. I think it complements the white body very nicely. Okay? So those are the reasons why I like Diamond Gobies. And I think it's pretty cool how the Diamond Goby actually sand sifts. There's a lot of sand sifting fish out there, like sand sifting starfish and some other species of Gobies. But I think the Diamond Goby is perhaps the best option for a sand sifting goby if you were looking for one for your aquarium. All right, so let's get into the information about diamond gobies right now. Now, the diamond goby has a few different common names. The diamond goby is also known as the mandin goby or the orange spotted sleeper goby. Now, the diamond goby can get to be about six inches in length, and they are considered a peaceful utility fish. They have orange dashes and dots running the length of the body with cyan-colored markings on their jaws. 
Their heads are quite large, and their jaws must be quite strong because they have to sift in the sand for their food. Now, on the reef, the diamond goby is often found in pairs that are thought to be monogamous. They will create a burrow in the sand bed where they can retreat to at night or at signs of danger. Now, it can be quite entertaining to watch these gobies do their thing. Now, at nighttime, when I shut the lights off, I see my diamond goby die right under the seat in bed, right under my live rock. It is pretty cool. Now, diamond gobies take mouthfuls of sand and build mounds around their bureaus. Some people recommend that you keep them in tanks with sugar-fine sand and to avoid the larger particle sand because the thought is that they can damage the diamond goby's mouth. Now, it really is important that a large live sand bed is available for the diamond gobies because these gobies rely on it for food. A benefit of their sand sifting is that they keep the sand looking very clean because they are constantly turning it over. But there is a downside to this behavior, though. They have no regard for your prized clams or mushrooms along the bottom of the live rock. They will form mounds or even cover smaller corals. You will have to do some redecorating often if you plan on keeping the diamond goby in your aquarium. But it can be well worth the effort with the sparkling white sand. Now, the diamond goby should be able to live for several years if you keep them well fed. This can be a little challenging at first, but it's really not hard to make sure they're getting enough to eat. Use a feeding stick or a similar device to place some fish food, such as myesis or brine shrimp, or even freshly, finely chopped shrimp from the grocery store under the sand near their burrow. They should be able to smell it and will go looking for it. Eventually, they should be able to associate the feeding stick with dinner and may start to take the food directly from the stick before you can place it under the sand. Try and see for yourself. Now, for me personally, I actually use my hands and I drop pieces of brown shrimp and market shrimp right in front of my diamond goby and he eats it. He eats it right in my hand. It's pretty cool. I love having interaction with my fish and this interaction is one of the reasons why I've grown to love diamond gobies. Now, these orange spotted sweeper gobies, a.k.a. diamond gobies, have a very good reputation as being very hardy and disease resistant, but don't risk your display tank with new acquisitions. Always use a quarantine tank for a few weeks at least. So you should always quarantine any new saltwater fish that you get. Finally, if you have a functioning deep sand bed for nitrate reduction, you will not want to keep the gobies. They will disturb deep sand beds by sifting the sand. Now, like many other fish around the world, saltwater and freshwater, the diamond goby has several forms. There are many different kinds of diamond gobies out there and they come from a wide area of the world. The first kind of diamond goby comes from the Red Sea from the Indian Ocean and it usually has a black shin spot and oblique bars on sides. The second variety of a diamond goby comes from Samoa. Now this one is very similar to the Red Sea version but it lacks the black shin spot. 
The next one comes from the Western Pacific. It lacks the oblique bar and chin spot, but it has round spots on the body. And the last variety of the Diamond Gobi comes from Sierra Lanka. This one has a black chin spot similar to the Red Sea and a body similar to the Western Pacific variation. So I believe my Diamond Gobi is from Sierra Lanka. All right? So that is some awesome information on Diamond Gobies to get our show started. Now, one thing you should know about Diamond Gobies is that they can actually be a Gobi that you can keep by themselves. I know a lot of people love pairing Gobies with shrimp, and they love pairing them with other Gobies, but the Diamond Gobi could actually live by itself. And I noticed at my local fish store, they actually uh, keep one Diamond Gobi per tank. That's not to say they cannot be kept in a pair, because they certainly can. But nine times out of ten, a lot of fish stores will keep them in a tank by themselves. Because imagine what one diamond goby could do to a sand bed, but what would two do? Even more destruction. Now, one thing to know about diamond gobies is they are avid, avid jumpers. They will jump out for any reason. So you always got to tank. Or excuse me, you always got to keep your tank covered because they are jumpers. So keep that in mind when considering getting a diamond goby. So this is probably going to be a short and sweet show packed with a lot of information on the diamond goby. But hey, short and sweet shows are great as long as they have a lot of awesome info, right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, take our first and only intermission of the night. Coming up next here on Saltwater Fish Profile, I'm going to give you a care guide and some more information on the Diamond Gobi. So I'm going to continue talking about the Diamond Gobi right after the intermission. Now during tonight's intermission, we're going to hear two songs. One song is from our sponsor, Ryan Serini, and the name of this song is Mama Told Me. And the second song is one of my personal favorite songs from John Newman called Come and Get It. And then we're going to hear our wonderful infomercials. So after this intermission, we're going to continue talking about the Diamond Gobi. So stick around, my wonderful fish keeping listeners. We've got plenty more talk on the Diamond Gobi coming up next. This intermission is being brought to you by rapper Ryan Serini. Check out his website at www.ryanserini.com and listen to his wonderful rap songs on iTunes. Let's keep it serene right here on American Variety Network. Don't ever take no shit, son And if 
they hating, you go hit them with that brick, son. Tell them where you from, let them know you down to ride. W's up in the sky, rep that shit until you die. Father, please forgive me. I've changed since my last confession. Prayers ain't been working lately. Dog shit is all I'm left with. Motherfuckers think that legend second coming. Resurrected till I come through and bury them all. They're facing men in my camp protected. I'm on point. Hollow tips. About to prove y'all counterfeit Prolific with all this rap shit Man, I'm on the move like an activist Mastermind with this ether Talk to God, yo, but I'm no preacher Heart's been cold as a motherfucking freezer Since my pops went to meet that reaper Uh, spit dope, narcotics Put the shit like my son it Non-stop, word vomit Prodigal sons on psychotics Y'all forgot who the fuck I was Must've forgot where the fuck I'm from Type of shit y'all cannot run I kill till the motherfucking cops come Then it's straight to the bank for the capital These rap cats are all laughable Yo, the army's every move is Tactical. I'm taking hits on these radicals, no apologies for my prophecies I seen the light, ain't no stopping me, cats in my ear with hypocrisy Got my mind on speed like velocity, uh Mama told me don't ever take no shit, son And if they hatin', you go hit them with that brick, son Tell them where you from, let them know you down to ride W's up in the sky, rep that shit until you die Mama told me don't ever take no shit, son And if they hatin', you go hit them with that brick, son Tell them where you from, let them know you down to ride W's up in the sky, rep that shit until you die My mama, my mama, my mama told me My mama, my mama, my mama told me My mama, my mama, my mama told me Kill everything you spit, son Hold this bitch ransom, uh
Do you have something you'd like to promote or advertise? Do you want to get some much-needed exposure for your business or your very own Facebook page or even your very own podcast? Well, look no further than Jackie's help and advice for promoting on Facebook. Jackie will help you advertise your goods and help you spread the word. I, Alice Cardinelli, have personally been great friends with Miss Jackie Wilkes, and she has a very kind heart, and she is a very sweet lady, and she will definitely help you grow like she has helped Alice Cardinelli grow. To advertise and promote your business or anything you want to advertise, please like and check out the page, Jackie's Help and Advice for Promoting on Facebook. Are you enjoying tonight's episode of the American Variety Network? Great! The American Variety Network really appreciates your listening. We also appreciate listener feedback. Please feel free to email us your thoughts and opinions on tonight's show. Our email address is AmericanVarietyNetwork at Comcast.net. That's American Variety Network at Comcast.net. You may also email us with any questions, comments, or concerns you may have about our show. You can also email us to book a guest appearance on the American Variety Network, or you may contact us to become a sponsor of the American Variety Network. American Variety Network at Comcast.net. Would you like to find out when the next episode of the American Variety Network is? Do you want to find out the news and updates for the American Variety Network? Well, all you have to do is go on your computer and log on to the social media sites. The American Variety Network is now on Facebook and Twitter. That's right, you can find the American Variety Network on Facebook and Twitter. Like our fan page on Facebook called American Variety Network. And follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter fan page is at American Network 1. Again, our fan page on Facebook is American Variety Network. Hit like. And our fan page on Twitter is at American Network 1. And hit follow. While you're here listening to this show on Blog Talk Radio, feel free to check out some of the other great shows Blog Talk Radio has to offer. There are shows for everyone, whether it be sports shows, politics shows, comedy shows, talk shows, and yes, even church religious shows. Become a loyal listener of Blog Talk Radio. Today, blogtalkradio.com. What are you thankful for this year? You know what Alex Cardinali and the American Variety Network are thankful for. You the listeners. That's right, Alex and all of us here at the American Variety Network are so glad you listen to our shows and tune into them. We love you listeners, remember that. The American Variety Network and Alex Cardinali would like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and we hope you enjoy some tasty turkey and have a nice meal with your loved ones. Be thankful for what you have and spend time with your loved ones. Happy Thanksgiving all. American Variety Network fans, mark your calendars and get ready to celebrate. Saturday, November 21st, 2015 at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain and 6 p.m. Pacific. The American Variety Network reaches another milestone as we celebrate our 250th episode. Our 250th episode is going to be filled with plenty of awesome surprises and fun. 
Here to tell you more about the 250th episode is the host himself, Alex Cardinale. On the 250th episode, there will be three special surprise guests, including one fishkeeping guest who will be broadcasting live from the Ohio Cichlid Association 2015 Extravaganza and two other awesome surprise guests. There will be some awesome comedy clips guaranteed to make you laugh and blast from the past clips. And there will also be a lot of fun. I personally invite you, my listeners, to help me celebrate 250 awesome episodes as you've been a huge part of my success. So join me live Saturday, November 21st, 2015 at 9 p.m. Eastern for our 250th episode at blogtalkradio.com forward slash American Network. Calling out all you turkeys and turkey lovers. Come join the American Variety Network on Thanksgiving Day for a special holiday-themed episode. This will be our very first podcast broadcast live on Thanksgiving Day. Live Thursday, November 26, 2015 at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific. Alex Cardinali will broadcast the American Variety Network for a special Thanksgiving Day morning special. This will be your last chance to ask any last-minute Thanksgiving cooking questions. I'll discuss how to make the perfect Thanksgiving turkey. I'll discuss NFL football on Thanksgiving, and much more. So come spend your Thanksgiving morning with the American Variety Network on Thanksgiving at 11 a.m. Eastern. Happy Thanksgiving! Breaking news just into the American Variety Network studios. On Monday, November 30, 2015 at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain and 6 p.m. Pacific, Alex is going to share some groundbreaking news and announcements that will shock the American Variety Network and Blog Talk Radio. What is the news? Well you're going to have to tune in live on Monday, November 30th because no one is going to find out. Suspense is the best. Plus there will also be a special service guest returning to the American Variety Network for the first time in over a year. So what is the major news? We will find out on November 30th. Listening to the American Variety Network, your only place for variety on Blog Talk Radio. Hey, fish maniacs! Would you like to learn about saltwater aquarium fish? Would you like to learn about fish like clownfish, gobies, tangs, and more? Well, you're tuned into the right saltwater aquarium show. This is the Saltwater Species Profile Series, live on Aquarium Talk, the podcast. Aqua Alex will talk about some of his most favorite saltwater species and educate you on these fantastic saltwater species. So, Saltwater Species Profile is now live on Aquarium Talk, the podcast on American Variety Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Saltwater Fish Profile, live right here on Aquarium Talk, the podcast. And tonight, I am talking to you about the Diamond Sand Sifting Goby. And before our wonderful intermission, I was giving out some wonderful information on the Diamond Goby, such as why I got a Diamond Goby why I like the Diamond Goby, and I gave you some tidbits 
of information on the Diamond Gobi. And now I'm about to present to you the care sheet for the Diamond Gobi. And before I do that, I'm actually right now looking at my 29-gallon saltwater aquarium. And I see that my Diamond Gobi Sandy is out and about and swimming around. They are a very active goby, at least mine is, a very beautiful fish. So if you're looking for a sand sifting goby, I recommend you get a diamond goby because they're active, they're beautiful, and they've got some great personalities on them. So I'm very honored to have one in my 29-gallon aquarium, and I cannot wait to move it into a 120 gallon saltwater aquarium and in that big tank I'm going to add another diamond goby and uh, pair them up. But anyways, if you have any questions on the diamond gobies or you want to share your personal experience on the diamond gobies, again, feel free to call in at one three four seven nine eight nine eight one four two. That's one three four seven. 989-8142. Alright, so now I'd like to give you the care for Diamond Gobies. Alright, now I'll talk about full growing size. Diamond Gobies usually max out at about 6 to 8 inches. So, unlike a lot of the freshwater Gobies, most of the Gobies of the saltwater hobby do not get above a foot. And luckily, the diamond gobies only get about 6 to 8 inches long. So the minimum tank size for a diamond goby, in my personal opinion, would be a 55-gallon aquarium and up. Now, a lot of the experts out there are going to tell you it has to be bigger than 55 gallons. I say the same thing. You should really try to get a Diamond Gobi in a 75-gallon, 90-gallon, 120-gallon because they really need that deep sand bed because they're going to eat that fauna living in your sand bed. So I'm going to say you will need a 55-gallon aquarium and up for a Diamond Gobi. Now, you could keep one in a 29-gallon aquarium temporarily. I would not keep one in anything less than a 55-gallon permanently. And the only way you could get away with keeping one in a 29-gallon aquarium like I am is if you are sure it's going to eat regular food. And the only way I would recommend to keep a Diamond Gobi in anything smaller than a 55-gallon is if you are hand-feeding it and sure it's eating. Because otherwise, it's going to perish and die and a tank smaller than a 55. So I knew this when I bought my Diamond Gobi, and I also knew that I was going to upgrade to a 120-gallon aquarium within two months. That's why I went out and got one. Now, if all you have available for you right now is a 29-gallon or a 40-gallon breeder, I'd make sure I got a bigger tank before I went out and got a diamond goby. So let's talk about the care level for the diamond goby. Now the diamond goby is actually a very easy fish to care for. It's a good goby for a beginner, but beginners should know that they will have to feed this fish very often to avoid it starving to death. Yes, that's right. This is one of the fish that you got to feed often, at least three to four times a day. Because diamond gobies in captivity have a reputation of dying because they are starving. Like I said, the diamond gobies, they eat the fauna and the live sand. But you could actually feed them regular fish food. It's really important that you feed them this to also keep them healthy and happy. So feed them three to four times a day. And other than that, they are a very easy fish to care for. Now, their temperament. They are a peaceful fish. They will not bother other fish on purpose. 
but Diamond Gobies can be a little bit territorial. They will defend their burrow, and they will defend where, they're, where they are hiding at. So it's best to try not to add any other species of gobies or blennies that might try to uh, take over the diamond goby's hiding spot because the diamond goby will chase them out of that spot like any other goby would. But other than that, they are a very peaceful fish. They will leave other fish alone, and they will leave your invert and uh, shrimp alone as well. Now, the big question a lot of saltwater people are going to ask, are diamond gobies reef safe or non-reef safe? Well, in my personal opinion, I believe, yes, they are reef safe. But just be aware, they can and will cover some corals with sand as they are a sand-sifting goby. So they will not eat any inverts. They will not eat any coral. But they will cover your small coral frags with sand. So it's always important to keep that in mind. But yes, you can add a diamond goby to your reef aquarium and not expect any problems whatsoever. All right, the water conditions for a diamond goby. 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. The pH should be anywhere from 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity should be anywhere from 1.0, 2.0, to 1.025. Now, I recommend keeping your salinity at 1.021 to 1.025, but again, you can get away with 1.020. A lot of the fish stores will keep the salinity at about 1.019 to 1.020 to save on salt and to save money. But in the home aquarium, I think you should get as close to the uh, natural salinity as possible. Also, the DKH is 8 to 12, and you really should make sure your nitrates are extremely low, below 20 ppm or lower if possible when keeping a diamond goby. That is really important, and I cannot stress that enough. Because like any fish, if the nitrates and nitrites get too high, they could potentially die. All right. So right now, I would like to talk about the diet for a diamond goby. This is really important. So if you are considering getting a diamond goby, I advise that you listen up loudly and clearly. Now, diamond gobies are omnivores, meaning they eat both meat and vegetables. Now, naturally, they are sand sifters, and they eat the fauna and the live sand. Now, I've said this numerous times on the show, but it's really important. It really is important that you guys know that. However, in the home aquarium, it is extremely important that we feed these guys very often because they will perish and die if not fed often. I recommend feeding three to four times a day. Now, here is what I feed my diamond goby. Brine shrimp, my SS shrimp, Spirina brine shrimp, krill, blood worms, new era marine flakes, and new era marine pellets, market shrimp, and the occasional live black worms. Those are all the foods my diamond goby eats. And I recommend all those foods for you to feed your diamond goby. I think that your diamond goby will do well if you feed them those foods. Um, you could also do nori, which is a popular food that Ains eat, and I'm sure your diamond goby would also eat that as well. Really, like most gobies, a diamond goby should not be picky. However, there are some gobies out there that will refuse to eat uh, regular fish food because they are caught in the wild, and they love the stuff that's in the live sand. If you should ever come across a goby like that, 
I would continue to push and push and push to get that gober to eat, and eventually it will start eating food. Um, I know a lot of people have had that uh, problem, and I've read on the Internet that they finally got their gobies to eat by using market shrimp and fresh ingredients. Now, I read that on a saltwater form, so I don't know how true that is, but one person said he got his picky diamond goby to eat by making his own homemade fish food, which included uh, shrimp, halibut, cod, and I believe mussels, and he combined that in a mixer, and uh, he fed that to his diamond gobies, and they started eating. So make sure that you start feeding your diamond goby as soon as you have it in your aquarium. Now, let's talk about the origin of diamond gobies. They are found in the Indo-Pacific. They're found in the Red Sea. They're found in southern Japan. They're found in the Barrier Reef. And they can be found in the New Caledonia. So diamond gobies are everywhere across the world. One key advice I can give you for keeping a diamond goby in an aquarium is to provide plenty of hiding places. If a goby has nowhere to hide, it's going to feel threatened and it may try to jump out of the aquarium. So it really is important that your diamond goby has plenty of hiding places. Now usually your live rock and your live sand will, prevent, will provide a lot of hiding places for your diamond goby. Now, in my personal experience, my diamond goby actually burrowed his sand bed right under the biggest piece of my live rock. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, I actually get to see him. I see him right under the biggest piece of my live rock in his little sand bureau. And I get to uh, throw the food in there and see him eat it. So if you've got a lot of live rock, I'm pretty sure your diamond goby is going to pick a spot and build his sand bureau there. Now, from personal experience, it is totally normal not to find them within the first few days after purchase and acclimation. They are hiding and getting used to their new surroundings. So when I first bought my Diamond Goby, I was really scared because I did not see him for the first two days after purchasing him, and the third day I saw him, and he began eating on the third day, and I was like, wow, I'm really happy. Uh, I saw my diamond goby come out from somewhere around, and he's eating. Really exciting, and uh, I love the diamond goby, and it was great seeing him on the third day. But yes, if you buy a diamond goby, do not expect to see him out and about like any other fish. He's got to get used to his surroundings, okay? All right. Now, this part is really important. I want you to listen clearly to this. It is extremely important to have a lid on your aquarium. I know a lot of saltwater keepers out there have those rimless, coverless saltwater aquariums, and they're good. I like those aquariums, but they are definitely a not for keeping diamond gobies. Because in nature, diamond gobies are jumpers. They will jump for absolutely no reason in this world. So if you want a diamond goby, it is extremely important you have a lid on your aquarium. I will repeat that. It is extremely important that you have a lid on your aquarium. Otherwise, you're going to lose your diamond goby. Now, from personal experience, I learned that the hard way with my four to five inch show stopping diamond goby because when I was at a Halloween party, he bailed and I found him next to my electrical cord on the ground and it was a very sad sight. So what did I do? The next day, I went out and bought a two to three inch diamond goby. I took some duct tape, I taped the sides, and then I took the glass panel from uh, the box where my Aquion glass canopies came from, and I taped that to the sides of the aquarium. So every little hole is covered. 
in my aquarium. There is nowhere for my diamond goby to get out. So it's covered so bad that I have a hard time lifting up my glass canopy. I have to have somebody hold that canopy when I am doing a water change or when I'm feeding the fish. That is how much I love the diamond goby. And I don't want mine to jump out. So if you want to have a diamond goby, just make sure your tank is fully covered so it does not jump out. Now, other species of guppies, uh, excuse me, other species of gobies do jump out as well. Like the yellow washman has occasionally jumped out. And uh, some of the other species of gobies also jump out as well. So if you're taping your uh, saltwater aquarium, you are also preventing other species of gobies, such as the firefish goby, from jumping out as well. So it's a very good idea to tape your saltwater aquarium and uh, put a good cover on it. So we've got a question from a live listener in the chat room. I would like to say hello. Uh, John, how are you doing today, John? Uh, thank you very much for tuning into the show. And John is asking me, can a diamond goby live in pairs? I have a 75-gallon aquarium, and I would like to add a pair of diamond gobies. Great question. Now, I am certainly not an expert on diamond gobies or any fish in the saltwater hobby for any means of the imagination, but I have researched this very topic, and I've been told by somebody on a saltwater forum that diamond gobies can, in fact, live in pairs because they live in pairs in the wild, so it could be done in the home aquarium. However, he says he does not recommend, in, recommend keeping them in pairs in a tank smaller than four feet, so your 75-gallon aquarium should be okay. So if you were to keep a diamond goby in a pair, you would need a 75-gallon aquarium or bigger. So I'm excited about that because now I know I can have two diamond gobies in my 120-gallon marine fish only with live rock system. All right. So I'm going to go along that same lines, but I'm going to say, can a diamond goby live with other gobies like the yellow washman goby? or the Randall's goby, or the pink spotted watchman goby? I'm probably going to say yes. The diamond goby can live with other kinds of gobies. However, I would not do it unless the tank was huge, like 120, 125, 150. That way, there is a whole bunch of spaces for each goby, to set up their own territories. So if you've got a 120 or a 125 or a 150 or a 180, you can have several types of gobies in your aquarium. The same can be said for blennies and hawkfish and all of the similar kind of fish. And I think it could work out beautifully in a tank that is very large. All right? So... Why would I recommend my listeners out there to purchase a Diamond Gobi? Well, number one, I think that the Diamond Gobi has so much potential in being a fish that has amazing personalities. I think a Diamond Gobi will win over any saltwater keeper out there who owns one. Now, a lot of people do not like diamond gobies because of their ability to cover coral frags and uh, cover some reefs. But I'll tell you, their personality makes up for it. Now, I'll admit this to you. I never, ever liked to fish in the freshwater hobby as much as I like my diamond goby. No fish in the freshwater hobby, personality-wise, can compare to that of a diamond goby. Now, I may be biased on that, but hey, it's my personal opinion and my personal experience. My diamond goby has the best personality of any fish that I really owned. And I love this fish. I love him like a dog. 
And uh, I cannot wait to move him into my 120 saltwater tank once it finished cycling. So I really recommend to any saltwater keepers out there, if you don't already, if you don't already have one, I really recommend you get a Diamond Gobi because they've got superb personalities, they look stunning, and they're a very beautiful fish. They also keep your sand clean, which is pretty cool. So you're not going to have any debris lying around your sand. You're not going to have all that green algae lying around your sand. It's going to be really, really cool. If you got fish like triggers or puffers or any of those kind of fish that eat inverts, get a diamond goby and you'll be safe. And your sand will stay clean. So I think diamond gobies are awesome. And another reason I would recommend a person keep a diamond goby is because simply – they are the best goby in the market. That's a good sand shifter. Now, I know there's a lot of different types of sleeper gobies out there, but I believe all of the sleeper gobies out there are in the family of Velocenia. Now, Velocenia is the sleeper goby family, and that includes the, uh, the gold head sleeper goby, and the Diamond Goby and some other ones. But personally, in my opinion, I believe the Diamond Goby is the best looking of the Velocenia species. So that's another reason why I recommend you, the listeners, uh, keep a Diamond Goby. Other than what I've said, Diamond Gobies are really easy to keep. They really are a beginner fish. As long as you're, you've got live sand, and as long as your tank is cycled, and as long as your diamond goby is eating, the diamond goby is for beginners. Need I say, live sand is a requirement for diamond gobies. A hood is a requirement for diamond gobies. Food is required for diamond gobies. So basically, those are all your requirements for a diamond goby. My final thoughts on the Diamond Goby. Well, a relatively inexpensive Goby. They usually range anywhere from $25 to $50, with $60 being a really expensive fish store. If you find a Diamond Goby for $60 to $80, it better be a full-grown specimen. Because in my area, at all my fish stores, I went to all my fish stores, and the prices are about the same. 25 to 40. If you're paying 60 to 80 dollars, I would seriously question your local fish store to see if you can get a profit off of that fish. But uh, my fish stores, they are 25 to 40 dollars, and they're a pretty good size, three to six inches at my fish store. So they're not expensive by any means in the imagination, because I've seen other kind of gobies out there that were about 100 dollars each. So, really, really inexpensive goby. Really easy to keep. And my final thoughts on a diamond goby, very stunning fish, a very underrated fish in the saltwater hobby, and a fish that gets bad reps for uh, all the beautiful scene work that they do. I think they are a great fish. I really do personally recommend you get a diamond goby for your aquarium. You cannot go wrong, folks. I think a diamond goby in your tank would be the best fish you ever had. Trust me on that. I really do. All right? Well, I think we've reached the end of our first saltwater fish profile episode here on Aquarium Talk the Podcast. I had a lot of fun on this show, and I hope you learned a lot about the Diamond Goby. This show, the Saltwater Fish Profile series, is going to be very popular, and this is going to be a series you can expect to see a lot of in 2016, like I said in my intro tonight. So our next Saltwater Aquarium Fish Profile will either be on the Firefish, the Flamehawk, or the Clownfish. I have not decided yet. But most likely will either be the firefish or flamehawk or clown. 
I already I already own the clownfish, and I probably will be owning the firefish and flame hawk the next time I do this show. Uh, this show is probably going to air next in December sometime, so I can't wait. So in a month, join me for another saltwater fish profile uh, show as I talked about another awesome saltwater fish. So if you've got a saltwater fish you'd like me to talk about, let me know by emailing me at American Variety Network at Comcast.net. That's American Variety Network at Comcast.net. So before I go, speaking of saltwater, I've got a major saltwater guest coming on the show on Monday, November 30th, 2015 at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, and 6 p.m. Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Aqua Alice Cardinelli, am honored to welcome Care of C, Sales Manager, Judd McCracken, to the American Variety Network. Judd is going to be our special surprise guest on our Breaking News show. Now, a lot of you saltwater hobbyists are familiar, familiar with Carib Sea because of Carib Sea's awesome life rock, Carib Sea's awesome, uh, awesome live sand, such as the Suiji Peak and the Hawaiian Black Sand. So you guys are familiar with Carib Sea. And I am very excited to interview them on November 30th. All right? So... Our next saltwater show is probably going to be in two weeks or so, and uh, Seth Fidron will be returning to host another show, and this is going to be a trouble and uh, maintenance show. Uh, so that's going to be a great saltwater show. Uh, we speak to Seth Fidron in a few weeks. All right, guys. I would like to thank all of my wonderful saltwater listeners for tuning into this show. I hope that you guys go out and get a beautiful diamond goby. And if you do, I want to see your diamond goby. Please join my saltwater group that I have on Facebook. I recently created a saltwater group last Friday, and I am looking for some beautiful members to join my group. My saltwater group is called Saltwater Aquarium Freaks on Facebook. In all capital letters. So type in Saltwater Aquarium Freaks and click join. If you have a diamond goby, I would like to see your diamond goby. So click join Saltwater Aquarium Freaks and post a picture of your diamond goby in my group. All right? If you know that you're in my group, there is a picture of me acclimating my diamond goby. So I want to see you in my group. Saltwater Aquarium Freaks, and I'd love to see your Diamond Goby if you have one. All right? You may also post your Diamond Goby under our Facebook page uh, in the comment section under today's episode or on my personal Facebook page, Alice Cardinelli. So I hope you guys will get a Diamond Goby. All right, Saltwater Lovers. I appreciate your listen. I love that you took the time to listen to the show, and I really hope you enjoyed the show. Special shout out to the people from saltwaterfish.com who took the time to listen to this great show. Special shout out to all the wonderful Facebook fish groups who allow me to post my shows in your group. Thank you very much for allowing that. And a special thank you to everyone who tuned into tonight's show. I appreciate your listen. So, it's a big Saturday next Saturday. Why? Well, the American Variety Network will be celebrating its 250th episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join me on my 250th episode next Saturday live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, and 6 p.m. Pacific. I've got three special surprise guests, and one of them is a reefer. He is huge in the saltwater reef hobby. Who is he? 
Well, you got to tune in Saturday next week at 9 p.m. Eastern to find out live on the 250th episode. All right, guys, this was Saltwater Fish Profile live on Aquarium Talk, only on American Variety Network on Blog Talk Radio. Aqua Alex is officially back, and Aqua Alex says thank you for tuning into this great show. Have a great rest of your Saturday night. Have a great Sunday, and we'll see you next time here on the American Variety Network. Good night, everyone. Nothing to chance, no stone unturned All of my demons, chalk is a lesson learned I revisit these moments, each chapter I'm closing Turn life inside out, my heart's forever open No more running from pain, no more living in shame Every star exposed, every flaw explained I go deeper and darker, share what I'm a part of Till I'm one with the grave, and burden no longer My darkest moment, stripped of all my clothing I got nothing to hide, flaws exposed, spirit broken That's where my head's at Look in the mirror, I think back I reflect on my life, take a deep breath and fall fast Back where it all started, conceived by broken hearted Single mom, foolish ways, using drugs Darker days, was young, but saw it all Birthdays, she blew me off Resentment was second nature, her love, a lost cause I stayed up every night, knowing she ain't coming home Grandma right there by my side, I ain't spent one night alone At six years old I felt like a mistake Tears on my face But I wiped those tears away See I grew up fast Became a man Knew exactly who not to be Their mistakes My blueprint Yeah my past Made me So these moments I hold them Close to my heart They're golden Never forget where I came from I made it out Thank God These are the moments I consider golden These are the moments I consider golden Close to my heart I hold them close to my heart Close to my heart I hold them close to my heart these are the moments I consider golden. These are the moments I consider golden. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Born in the house of horror, I vow to be different. Nothing like my father, my root of existence. Me no disrespect, but I can't deny the facts. My mother suffered for years at that man's hands. Beaten and bruised, she hit rock bottom. Missed 20 years of my life hitting that fucking bottle. <laughs> as for my father, his distance was a blessing. He knew he had his issues, stayed away as protection, but no excuses. That man was abusive, failed me as a father, left me with this confusion like what's a man supposed to be? Yeah, tell me what's a man supposed to be? Cause all I've ever seen is pain and infidelity Dark memories from my past spark insecurities Now family secrets are eating me Fears of my girl leaving me Will I end up alone? Shit, that's all that I've known And those that love me the most Man, we're all poverty stricken Dad, in and out of prison Constantly beating on women Crippled by his addiction This shit is hard to envision Suicide by prescription pills So I'll never forget it these are the moments I consider golden. These are the moments I consider golden. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. These are the moments I consider golden. These are the moments I consider golden. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. If I fall, I get up in this life. Don't let up, I'ma fight to the end, man. My life, my past, where I've been, where I'm at, wouldn't change, not a damn thing. Been hit, but still standing, got hurt, but took action, I fight to the end, man. Never fold, never cave, found strength in my pain, wouldn't change, not a damn thing. These are the moments I consider golden. These are the moments I consider golden. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. These are the moments I consider golden. These are the moments I consider golden. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. Close to my heart, I hold them close to my heart. If I fall, I get up. In this life, don't let up. I'm a fight to the end, man. 
My life, my past, where I've been, where I'm at, wouldn't change, not a damn thing. Been hit, but still standing, got hurt, but took action, I fight to the end, man. Never fold, never cave, found strength in my pain, wouldn't change, not a damn thing. That's all, folks.